What I'm going to do next is I'm going to draw a couple more options here, and I want to illustrate a couple more ways to create geometry. The first way is instead of using boxes or these platonic solids that are just prepackaged, you can also draw things with curve commands or with polylines. And I showed you the curve command in the first segment. I'm going to show you the polyline command now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch into my top view. And I'm going to type in zoom and then I'm going to click extents. And what that's going to do is that's going to zoom out so that everything in my model is visible. Just like the curve command, the polyline, which is another type of curve, is going to prompt me for a series of points. And for this exercise, I'll turn on ortho. What I can do is after I specify a first point, it's going to ask me for the next point of my polyline. And I can just start clicking around. I can also type in exact dimensions like 40. And when I do that, it's going to constrain me to a distance of 40, but in any direction. And it's also a good thing to note that you can toggle off ortho at any time. If you hold down shift, I typically leave ortho off because if you hold down shift while you're in a command, you'll see that it just got bold as I hold down shift, it's going to toggle ortho on and off. I'm going to hold shift here. I know that my next point in my line, I want to constrain down to this line. I want it to be in line with this point here. A couple ways I can do that is I can use this functionality called smart track, which is turned on. The way that I use that is that I hover over another point for a second until it kind of gets grayed. And then I follow my line over. And if I hold shift, it's going to lock it into place and I can draw perfectly aligned with that point. I'm going to undo that. Another way to do this is to hold shift in the direction that I want to go in, and then I'm going to just tap tab, my tab key. And what that does is it locks. So now I can't even move in any other direction. It locks the heading of my cursor. So now what I can do is with my endpoint object snap enabled, I can just click this point and it's going to make it perfectly aligned with my origin point. And now I want to close this polyline. I can either just click this original point or there's an option up in the command line called close. And when I do that, it's going to actually close the surface. Let's say that I messed up and I forgot to close my polyline. Oops, I left this thing open. One way I could close this is I can draw a line from this point to this point. I don't have a closed polyline, but if I select these two objects together and I type in join, now I do have a closed polyline. There's another way to do this. There's a command called close curve, close CRV, and it's gonna ask me to select open curves to close. I'm gonna select this guy, hit enter, and it's gonna automatically close the curve. So now I drew a couple polylines. I'm gonna delete this one. I'm also gonna draw a curve. And just like the polyline command, I'm specifying a bunch of points in space. I can use the option to close this curve as well. And if I want to go back and adjust these points, remember I can always turn the points on after the fact. So I can move these things. Maybe I want this portion of my building to be angled. Maybe I want this portion of the curve to flare out a little bit more. Just keep that in mind that you can always adjust these things after the fact using control points. I'm going to go back to my perspective view. I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to scale so it fits on my site. And then I'm going to move this thing into place. I want to start looking at it in site context. One thing I can do now is that I've moved this curve onto my surface and it's kind of hard to see because it's actually poking down through the surface. But one thing I can do is instead of working with boxes, I can actually just make an extrusion of this curve. One thing to notice, by default, what this extrusion command is going to do is it's just going to create an extrusion of those curves. There's no top, no bottom. One way I can get around this is by using the cap command. And what the cap command is going to do is just like the close curve command, it's going to close up any openings in the solid. Another way to do this is within the extrude curve command. There's an option called solid. I'm just going to click this. Alternatively, you'll notice that some of these words have letters underlined. You can use your keyboard and just hit, like in this case, I hit S and then enter, and it's going to toggle this back and forth between solid and not solid. So I'm going to make this a solid extrusion. And let's say I know that it needs to be 10 feet tall. The site isn't scaled very well, but I just made an extrusion that is exactly 10 feet tall, so 120 inches. Let's eyeball this for now. Let's make it about that tall. I'm going to select my geometry that I just made, and I'm going to move it to Design Option 3, 
let's make that chartreuse. So now I have a layer option here. And likewise, I can extrude this just like I did with my first poly line. I can do that with this curve. So I can extrude this curve. Let's go up about that high. And I'm going to move this to option four. And I'm going to adjust the layer color of option four to cyan. Now I can start moving these things into place. Let's move all of these guys. I'm going to just move all of my design options all right on top of each other. Start adjusting them. Okay, and now I can quickly toggle through all of my design options. So now I have option one. I can take a look at this and, you know, I don't think this is oriented correctly on the site. So I can rotate it maybe a little bit, move it into place. I can see that, oh, there's a cantilever here. That's kind of interesting. Maybe I want to move this out a little bit more to make more of a cantilevered surface. I can turn that off. I can work with option two. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Let's rotate this into place. Maybe this is better sited down on the lower portion of the site. Okay, so there's this kind of interesting thing that happens here. I'm making arbitrary decisions now, but you can see how you can start just using these really simple masses to start evaluating design decisions based on your site context. So this one, let's move this guy over here. We want him on this corner of the site. Maybe the idea with the scheme is that he bridges a portion of the site, so there's a way that you can walk under this building. So that's option three. Option four, my blobby guy, maybe he wants to be embedded in the hill up here. So now I have four very different design options and all controlled by layers. Mm -hmm.